Hello and welcome. I hope this sounds okay. We tried the DD a couple of weeks ago and it didn't work so well, so hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully it sounds good. If you can't hear me, please let me know so that I don't just do this for a while uh, and you can't hear me. I was set to make this video last night. I had everything set up in here. I'm like, I'll do this cool what's in my camera bag video because it's been a while since I've made one of these. And as I started to to like record, I'm like, well, wait, I actually want that light in this box that I can like show how I pack it up. And the more I I progressed, I realized I need all this gear to film myself. Uh, and so it, it dawned on me that I think the best outlet for this would be a live stream where you're not expecting high quality because it's just my phone. Um, so thank you in advance for your understanding. Let me spin this around. Da -da -da. And again, if you can hear nothing, let me know. Um, but I thought I would walk through what is in my camera bag and then furthermore, what is in my drone bag, my light bag, my audio bag, my grip bag, and my stand case. And so, come along as we explore all of my gear. We're going to start with the camera bag because that's what you came for. That's the exciting stuff. Let's tilt this down. There we go. Going with it. So in all of my cases here, this is my light case. Move that aside for now. It's an umbrella. This is all audio. This is all drone. And this is the camera bag. I'm gonna walk through its contents for you and I'm gonna go pretty quickly because there's a lot of gear that we're gonna go through in the next 15 minutes. Um, if you've got any questions, throw them in the chat and I'll do my best to see them. I have to come clean this A74 and this Lawa 12 millimeter zero distortion wide angle lens are not mine. I'm renting them. Uh, for a shoot that I have coming up and that's what I'm packing for as well So as I go through this gear and show you what I've got I'm also going to explain what I'm bringing with me and why but It's a pretty comprehensive shoot. We're, we're filming interviews a lot of like roaming interviews and one like seated well-lit interview so we need both a lean kit and a very robust kit we're also doing some live shots of panels and then a ton of B-roll. So I basically need everything that I've ever had. And so the, very few things will get omitted from the kit for this job, but we're gonna walk through it. Here we go. So first up is the meat and potatoes of everything I do. This is the Sony A7S III. Uh, and I have the 24 to 70 G Master 2.8 lens and I use this for almost everything. This lens, I mean, half of the shots that I ever film are through this lens onto this sensor. This is a little beast of a camera and it's one of those things where I don't know how I really survived without it before, but I did. Um, but yeah, Sony a7S III with the 24 to 70 G Master. Also in lenses, there's three lenses that I carry with me. We've got the 24 to 70, then the 70 to 200. So we've got all the way from 24 to 200. Um, all at f2.8. This is the G Master. Uh, this is the version one. There's a new one that came out that is tempting, but I don't think it's good enough. Not that it's not good enough. It's not worth it for me to upgrade and discard this guy. Um, and then instead of a 16 to 35, which is pretty common, or like the 12 to 24, which I rented two weeks ago and loved, but my wide angle, the only thing wider than my 24 to 70 is I have the 20 millimeter G 1.8. Prime. So this isn't a zoom lens. I can't go wider than 20. I can't do 21, 22, or 23. But this, this little lens I love, and I know that there's, there's bigger lenses and faster lenses and maybe sharper lenses, but the form factor of this is why it's in my bag. This, I can throw it on any gimbal and it balances in a second. Gimbals don't have to work hard. I can put my full matte box on the front of this um, and be able to shoot outside with ND and it just doesn't weigh enough to really cause any problems. So I love this lens, and those are my three lenses that I'm bringing. 
The three lenses I am not, oh, and I'm bringing, I take that back. I rented this, but the 12 millimeter wide angle zero distortion. It's a very fun lens that I've never used before other than a couple quick shots to test it. I like that. And then I've rented the Sony a7 IV as a B camera. And if I like it, I may add it permanently to the kit. I had the a7 III and then I sold it and I've been living with one camera for a while, which I thought I would hate, but it puts me in the situation of when I need two cameras, I end up hiring a second person anyway. And a lot of the people I hire have a camera. Um, and so I get to film something in mid-May with, with somebody who reached out in a comment in, in a, a live stream a couple weeks ago, and we've since connected. He's an awesome dude, um, and we get to work together in a couple weeks. So pretty cool how that all works out. Uh, but this camera has to be returned before then, but he has a Sony a7 III we'll be using. Uh, lenses that I'm not bringing, I've got the 90 millimeter macro Sony, which I love. I love the 90 millimeter macro because um, it's got that, it can really reach in on something, but you can also do some cool portraits. Uh, and it, it's, it's a great B lens uh, or B camera lens for interviews um, if I don't want to bring the 70 to 200. Um, in this little case, I've talked about this before, I've made videos about this before, but the lens that's not coming is the probe lens, the 24 millimeter macro f14 at its fastest um, which helps put a lot of things in focus uh, i don't mean that emotionally but don't need the macro lens at this trade show don't need the other wide macro lens and as much as i would love it because it's just a fun toy this is the 200 to 600 g lens and i absolutely love this lens it's mostly used for birds uh, and so if you're, if you're shooting in a convention center, you're probably not going to see a lot of birds and it's massive. So it would take up most of my camera bag to bring it. Um, so it does not come on this shoot. And so that's going to be it for lenses. Um, rounding out the rest of the camera bag, the things that I always take with me, I've got mixed emotions, but the Narbox here is a wonderful tool when it works um, and I wish that their company hadn't been forfeited or whatever they're going through right now uh, because it, it's an awesome tool and I hope that if they don't come back that somebody creates something as good at the, as this because as of right now there is nothing. Um, I've got my SD cards, I've got your standard things like little dust blower, um, a bunch of uh, lens cloths, a multi-tool that 99% of what I use this multi-tool for is the screwdriver, the flathead screwdriver for um, attaching the tripod plates, of which there are a few extra in my bag. I have a little USB battery if I need to charge something. Um, this actually came with my away suitcase, uh, which I was surprised to get as much use out of as I have. Um, and then I've got the Color Checker x rite Passport, which I sometimes use the, use the gray card. Uh, I seldom actually use all this color thing to check anything, but the neutral gray card has proved itself um, a few times. I have the full size version. Um, I'm gonna get to some stuff that I'm not bringing. I have the full size version and it's just not worth it to bring it, um, I think on this trip because it's just extra gear and it's bulky. Uh, and then the last thing in here are my monitors. I have the small HD7 uh, and small HD, small HD Focus 7, small HD Focus 5, both with the Teradek. This is a transmitter, this is a receiver. Um, so these can be handy things. Although, I'm not going to bring these. Because we're going to be lean and mean, and the one big interview shot we're doing that's all set up and everything, I'm going to be running one camera by myself, and it's just extra gear that I'm not going to use. So we're leaving it. We're leaving it, and that's fine. So pretty lean camera kit actually. Also there's an air tag in here um, so that I know where my bag is. Uh, worst case scenario. I want to like sew it into the liner so it's not just sitting there but haven't done that yet. Um, the one thing that really doesn't fit in here that I wish would and maybe I could figure out a way to do it um, but this is the Polar Pro Base Camp Matte Box system um, and this has the flag on top of it and then I can put variable ND filters in here uh, and it's got a big circular polarizer and these step-up rings 
there's a different one for each one of my lenses. And so the nice thing is on a shoot like I've got, I don't like having a whole bunch of separate um, ND filters for, uh, A, it gets expensive, but having a separate ND filter for every lens when I'm going from, from location to location, it, it's annoying to take all those things off, put them all back on. So I like that I can just get it right in here and then pull this whole box off with one screw, with one thumb screw, just loosen it and put it from lens to lens. Uh, and then this little thing has, um, this is one of the ND filters. Um, so they've got this form factor. And this is what people don't like about it is it's not compatible with your standard ND filters that you may buy, like your four by four filters or whatever. Like they're all proprietary, but I don't have any of those. So this was kind of convenient to just get these. And then these are the step up rings for each of my lenses. Um, so for me, this works really, really well. And as somebody who shoots outside a lot and I was tired, Sony lenses, you can't fit an ND filter and the uh, actual lens hood that came with it. You can't fit these on at the same time. So you have to choose, are you blocking shadows or are you using ND? And so that's why I went with the matte box solution. But when it comes to packing the matte box, I end up usually tossing it just on top of my grip bag um, in this crate, uh, which I'll go through next. So camera bag, if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. If people have been asking, I'm gonna check. Has anyone asked a question yet? Because when I look up, if they're gone, they're gone. Da -da -da. No audio support? I hope you mean, do I have support for audio rather than my audio is not working right now? But I've got a whole bag of audio just for you, Jay. Um, in my grip case here, I have two things, um, and I'm using them right now, but I keep all my extension cords in here, and then on top of the extension cords is this bag that has my friction arms. I love these eye footage spider clamps, spider crab, MA5 to 6. Um, but when I'm using those monitors or attaching an audio mixer to a, a tripod or something, these are great. Uh, got a clamp for attaching my boom poles, which will go in my stand case, and then just a bunch of pony clamps, A clamps, whatever you want to call them. Um, so just stuff to attach things, and this goes on top of this, and that sits in the bottom of my big beautiful cart as I'm going. Sounds like a battery might be dying out. Come on. That's what it sounded like. Someone said it sounded like last time, but everything's charged. I turned off the... Uh, all the, like my phone's on airplane mode except for Wi-Fi in case the cell signal was interfering with it or something like that. But I don't don't know how to fit. I'll, I'll try one thing. Let's see. I'm gonna come over here and stand by everyone. I think it was the shirt. It wouldn't be the shirt. This shirt causes no problems. I'm gonna. Da -da -da. Static is gone. All right, so I don't know if it was the shirt, but um, I took the transmitter further away from my phone, so maybe that'll make a difference. Now I turned the whole thing. All right, since, since Jay, my favorite location sound mixer, is here, we'll do the audio kit next. Um, audio kit, so most of what I'm doing audio for is seated interviews indoors so i don't need a particularly robust kit and if i'm doing anything beyond that where i'm going to hire somebody uh, i hire jay um, so i don't own labs anymore i bought this one just for youtube and it keeps bothering me i guess um, but that's been uh, so i have a pretty simple audio kit for running all my interviews um, my whole audio kit is just this this is the zoom h1 um, H1N and you just sort of like if people are doing the interview over there you can just sort of set it down in the room and it's going to get great audio you don't even have to worry about checking levels or anything um, and so that's how I do all my audio um, next up the drone bag has some exciting stuff in it I just have to wait for comments to appear to see if my jokes are landing um, don't let your friends record interviews with a zoom H1N uh, it's a handy thing to like put a lav like you can put this in somebody's pocket and just record a lav in a pinch like as a backup but I keep it in here because it was I don't think it has any resale value 
Yeah, this does, this does, <laughs> the H1N does not have 32 float, how I wish. Uh, but yeah, if you've got 32 float, you don't even need a microphone. Like this recorder has 32 float and you can plug microphones into it, but you don't need to. It'll just record everything uh, and you can adjust it all in post, which is handy. Um, if you're new here, if you're new here, <laughs> just, if you ever want to know anything about the F6, Rebel Tech, who just commented, has, I think you just made your 40th video about the F6 diving through every intricate feature of this thing and every update that's come along with it. Um, if, if you're watching this and you're interested in the F6, check out Justin's channel, Rebel Tech, uh, because he is the foremost authority on the Zoom F6. Um, the way I use it is I plug microphones into it, I record in 32 float, and I adjust everything uh, later. However, and I'm gonna make a whole video about this, but 32 float is not magic. All it does is you can adjust your gain later, but you still have to get your mic positioning right. You still have to make sure all your cables are right. You have to make sure you're using the right microphones, which so often people use the wrong ones. Um, and so the two microphones that I use for everything, most, most of what's in this bag, I have a shock mount. I have a tiny pair of earbuds. I usually bring a bigger pair of headphones, but um, lately I've just been bringing these just because the extra space is not worth it for me and I don't wear them the whole time. And sorry to, to Jay and Justin, I'm not monitoring the audio the entire time we're recording, um, typically. Uh, I got some microphone cables in here. I've got a couple dead cats. This one's for the H1N. I've never used this. I don't know why I have this and why it stays in here. Uh, there's a, a random Rode M1 dynamic microphone, which I use for podcasting that's in here for some reason. I'll take that out before I go. Uh, windscreen, dead cat for my two main mics. Um, I don't know why they packaged this like a pipe bomb, but they did. This is the Zoom NTG3, and I've made a few videos about this. I love this microphone. I'm not saying it's better than every other microphone because I haven't used every other microphone, but I know that this one does the job I need it to do every time, except when a shotgun microphone isn't appropriate, um, which is more often than you'd think. Um, and so this is my go-to shotgun, but my go-to microphone that I use more frequently is the Zoom NT5, and I've made videos about this, and I'll be making more videos about it, but it's a pencil condenser microphone, meaning it's basically the same as the shotgun, except it doesn't have that long empty tube on it with slots in it, like shotguns have. A pipe bomb. Yeah, I don't know. So Rode sent this, the comment was, you want a pipe bomb for your 416. Rode ships these in, like this is the official Rode one. I didn't get this and it's weatherproof, it's sealed. This little tube is pretty solid, um, but it can be excessive. Um, but this is the mic that I use more often than not for all of my interviews because I'm not doing things on a sound stage. I'm not doing things in a controlled environment. I'm in somebody's conference room. I'm in echoey places and shotgun mics sound bad if there's any reverb. Um, so this is the mic that I end up using for almost everything. Um, and I'm going to be in a weird spot with this interview because I have to mic two people and we're going to be indoors in a conference room and I think I'm just going to put use these two mics and uh, the more important of the people gets the NT5 which is going to sound a little bit more natural and the interviewer is going to end up with the NTG3 which will sound a little muddy and I can fix it and post a little bit um, but that's going to be the bulk of it. Um, but actually because of what I need for this trip I'm switching things tonight. Let me pile all this back in here for a minute. And we'll head over to the drone case. Uh, by the way, these are all F-stop ICUs, uh, which they call internal camera units. And all of these things slide into the F-stop backpacks. So I can just slip. Usually I put this big thing right in this backpack and then I'm good to go with a backpack. But when I'm shooting like bigger trade shit, like when I'm gonna be near my cart, I just take them out and set these things on top of my cart and then I don't have the bulk of carrying a backpack around, which is handy. Um, and so I'm probably gonna get more of these just because I love them. But this is my drone kit. Um, and I have the Mavic 2 Pro. I don't have the Zoom one. This is the one with the Hasselblad wider sensor. 
Um, and I flew it tonight for the first time in a while. Uh, my buddy asked me to take some pictures. They just had a sweet roof put on their house, uh, this like all slate roof, um, and they wanted pictures of it. So that's what I did. But this case is smaller than this case, and I'm gonna take this divider out, and my audio for this trip is gonna be the good old F6. I'll put the NTG, NTG3 and the NT5 in here. I'm gonna take, since we'll be filming outside probably, that dead cat um, and the windscreen just for fun. Uh, and then we'll take a handful of microphone cables. I'll take, I'm only running two mics. I'm gonna take three cables just in case one fails. Um, you never wanna be caught without a mic cable. And then this uh, clamp to hook the mic onto a boom pole. And this is, oh, We'll take a pair of headphones. But this is my entire audio kit then that I will need. And Jay manages to fill his entire SUV with this custom built everything for uh, a ton of audio gear. But I want to reiterate, I'm not, I'm not equipped to do everything. I'm equipped to do seated interviews and this little case is all I need to get that done. And if I need anything more than that, and this is really the takeaway from everything gear related, if you need something more than you have, you could buy something or you could hire somebody that has it and knows how to use it and you make friends, your jobs get better because they're more exciting and more fun. Um, yeah, I highly recommend hiring people who have the gear you want before you buy the gear that you want. Um, extra props and D filter, there we go. So former audio kit going away and becoming the drone bag until I get back and back into the case, into the cabinet it goes. Um, also not coming, but an important part of the kit, I have the Ronin RS2, um, which is a really strong gimbal. Uh, I'm not gonna build it or anything, but if you don't know what it looks like, it's one of the like lightsaber gimbals and it's great. And I usually use the 20 millimeter on it, uh, this little tiny guy, and it has no problem throwing this around at high speeds, but it can also handle the 70 to 200 if I wanted to put that on there or the 24 to 70. Um, so it's a strong gimbal and it's got a ton of different ways you can use it. Um, like you can mount it on stuff and control it with your phone or an Xbox controller from a long way away which is really handy, but at this conference, I've hired two people who are going to be filming the B-roll, and so I don't have to bring my gimbal because it's that awesome situation. If you haven't been in the situation before where you can say like, man, I really want a shot of that. Hey, go get a shot of that. Uh, and they get a better shot than I would have gotten. That's awesome. Uh, next up, let's do the light kit. Now I talked about this, I think, in a recent video. Um, but this is my amazing, wonderful light kit, which has taken me a while to hone in. But what's important to note is that it is entirely self-contained in here. And I know people who, have, like I used to have aperture lights and stuff, and each light has its own case that's bigger than that medium now drone case, audio case that I just put away. Like they're big. And the fact that in this case I've got not just a three-point lighting kit, but a really good three-point lighting kit. I've got my Quasar Rainbow uh, two-foot. I have a Quasar Double Rainbow two-foot, so it's it's essentially two of these side to side. Uh, and there's just a screw loose in here, uh, which I need to fix again. But those run off a single power cord. They don't have a ballast or anything like that because they're just little LEDs. So fantastic little lights. They can also run off V-mount batteries with these cables that they include with it. Um, so there's two lights and then the other one, and I've made far too many videos about this, but this is the Hudson Spider Mosey and each of these six arms bends out and it turns into this big star shape that I'm not gonna put together. But it's an amazing key light by itself, but then you can also bounce it into an umbrella really quickly and have a beautiful, even softer light source that fits in this little teeny tiny pelican case. The biggest part of all of this 
is that this Hudson Spider has this massive power supply and then a huge ballast to control it. Um, and these are the two biggest, without these, I could fit like four more, five more quasars in here easily, um, which is tempting and which may end up being a part of the kit in the future. But that's my beautiful, wonderful light kit. And it's coming because we got a light and interview. Um, and I think we'll supplement with a couple more lights just because we got two people. Um, next up, we're nearing the end. I've got a lot of extra gear that I've got a lot of extra grip gear, like, uh, these Cardellini clamps or Mathlini clamps, uh, when you use the trademark name. Um, I've got a lot of those. Um, I've got a slate and in here, this is what I was talking about. I might end up bringing this just because it's flat and I get to drive. I don't have to fly. So this big gray card is really handy for color balancing before interviews. Um, and I think this thing was like 200 bucks, which is crazy for a big sheet of gray paper. Um, but that and the slate, the dumb slate is in here. And so I may end up bringing that, but I'm not sure yet. We'll find out. Then we've also got reflectors and bounce. Uh, and then something I've only used twice for clients. I have a teleprompter that folds out uh, and Jay and I shot with this um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, or in February, and I just find that teleprompter stuff looks weird for most of what I do. Um, I'm doing a lot of documentary style, interview driven videos, and when someone's reading off a teleprompter, you can tell. So we were doing this like long children's story, so it made sense that they could read the stuff, uh, and it was a really long script that they weren't going to memorize. Um, so I busted off for that, but that was the first time in like six years that I had used this thing. Um, and then I used it for one YouTube video a couple weeks ago, which was fun. Um, it was the one about lights, Quasar and Hudson lights. I wrote the whole thing, I scripted it, and I used the teleprompter. Um, I also have four of these. These are the Quasar two-foot daylight tubes. Um, and I'm not gonna turn this on right now, and I've made videos about this, but these are $45 and they're flicker-free, dimmable LED tube lights. They're amazing, uh, and they're inexpensive. And so 45 bucks, you can get a few of them, put them in a quick little array, and you've got an awesome key light that costs less than 200 bucks. Uh, and then this is just like a $10 dimmer I got from Target or Amazon, which can dim these lights. So handy, and I've used them before, um, but I'm not bringing them for this trip, but we're walking through all my gear. Um, I have a Rhino slider and I have two sets of rails for it. I have the uh, 24 inch rails and I have the 42 inch rails. And I've used the 42 inch rails only a couple of times for stuff that I've shot here. Most of what I do, I use the, the two foot rails here. Um, and they've got like the motion control and I've got all that stuff, but lately I've been just using, I have like the, it's just a, it's like 50 bucks, but this is the flywheel they make. It's this heavy, it's hard to see how heavy it is on video, but it's just this heavy wheel. But when you slide it, it has to spin this. And so it really smooths out your slides. And I shot a whole thing for a fire truck pump in Florida a couple weeks ago. Um, the one I was live streaming about two weeks ago, uh, the trip that went awry, but just having a slider that I can put on a tripod and get some shots that are really steady. I didn't bring my gimbal. Um, I just put it on this with a flywheel and it worked out really, really well. Um, so I'm learning that I, I've, for a while I did a whole lot of gear acquisition where any YouTuber that was like, hey, Aperture sent us this, uh, you should buy it, I did. and. It was, it was empowering to be able to do stuff with it, but after a while, I just wasn't using it. I still don't use most of it. And over the past two years, as, as COVID really slowed down production and I started hiring people more, it became easy to say, well, I'm going to just, in, instead of getting a motorized slider and stuff, like if, if I really want that, I'm probably gonna hire somebody to run it on the day anyway. And that has opened me up to, to slimming down my kit and making it a lot more lean. Turn on notifications for this video. Hey yo, thank you. Uh, happy to have you. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I make gear videos, people like it. 
And then uh, I don't make a ton of gear videos. I talk about emotional things about building a business. Um, also in the gear acquisition stage, um, I'm just gonna bring the, the phone over here for a second so you guys can see this and hopefully it sounds okay. But these are my, my cabinets. I did a studio tour um, a few weeks ago, but this is my toolbox and I've got like my gaff tape and all that stuff in here. So it's not just purely tools. This is also video stuff. This is my charging counter um, where I charge all my batteries, dead batteries, charged batteries. And then in here I have extra hard drives. I have what I call my treasure chest, which is just every adapter and screw and anything that I've ever gotten from anywhere. And so if you need me to connect two things, I can probably find cables in here that will get it done. Uh, and then this little box is like my, before I go on any shoot, I go through this box and I end up packing a lot of it into pockets of my bags. Here, I'll show you this, cause this is kind of exciting. Um, it looks really dirty. Let me spin this around. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a mess, but this is an intervalometer. Um, if you're doing time lapses, uh, I've got a lens cleaning kit. Joe's sticky stuff, if you've never used this, it's, it's amazing. Um, can I open it with one hand? We'll see. So this is just double-sided tape, but it doesn't leave a residue. Um, and it's really strong. I have a, a deck of cards that I stuck to my wall like two years ago next to my bed, three years ago. And it's still there, but I've taken it off a couple times and it hasn't ruined the paint or anything. Um, but it's a really handy thing if you're doing anything uh, in production and you want to hang something on the wall for a minute or you can use it to stick laves on somebody um, if that's your cup of tea, but that stuff's awesome. Got earplugs and safety goggles because I shoot in a lot of factories and things like that. Uh, first aid kit gets thrown in the bag every single time. And then there's stuff like uh, finishing powder, which is just makeup, um, but it will take somebody who's a little sweaty and it'll make them less shiny on camera. And there's a whole bunch of uh, these red whips and lens cloths and things in here. Um, and my eyes are always red and puffy, if you haven't noticed, if you're new to the channel. Um, and so I have to clean my eyelids. And so I have eyelid pads that I bring with me uh, and more headphones. So just a little, I dive through here every time and throw a bunch of this stuff in the bag just so I have it. Um, and this is my little emergency kit, something like that, I guess. Um, but in here I have two flashes and a trigger. So when I do photography, um, for a while I was doing a lot of photography and I didn't have a flash, then I bought a flash and the phone stopped ringing about photography. But so I have all that flash stuff there. This is all the cables for when I pack. This is like to connect those monitors, HDMI cables, charging cables, stuff like that. Um, this is all accessories for the slider. And then down here, this is all extra audio stuff. So there's cables and old microphones and headphones and stuff like that. Um, occasionally I go through there and refresh the kit. Um, but lately for my, my only thing that I really needed audio for, I just hired Jay. So yeah, before we buy a bunch of microphones, hire Jay. Uh, Ronin, and these are all the cases. That's the one thing, the Polar Pro Base Camp system, everything came with its own custom case. And I just have tons and tons of these cases, which is kind of annoying. But that's what's in there. And then there's only three more things, really. I've got Apple boxes and a fog machine that I've only turned on to test once and never used other than that, which is kind of a shame. There's sound blankets in that big bin down there. That's a product turntable right there. More grip stuff in a second crate. Here's some of the packaging for the base camp stuff. I have a ghillie blanket, which we used for filming in a greenhouse and hiding some benches, which came in clutch, it turns out. Uh, and then this is all diffusion and stuff that's come with some of the lights that I don't use that often. Hard hat, never know when you're gonna need a hard hat. Uh, this is my licensed drone, commercial drone pilot vest, um, which doesn't really mean anything. I bought it off Amazon. You don't have to be an FAA pilot to buy one. Uh, but I feel sometimes really cool and sometimes like a huge nerd wearing this vest. But I will say that a lot of times when I'm flying, somebody will just bother me, like come up and ask, hey, what you doing? It's like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to 
pilot something in the sky. So this says professional drone pilot, do not disturb. And uh, it works. People, people leave me alone. I look official. Um, it's hard to see this, but this is a 40 inch by 40 inch floppy. And I bought this like a year ago and I love it. And I wish I could bring it to this um, thing. I wish we would have the space and the time to set stuff up, but being able to throw a floppy up and take the light over, like just control the light around somebody's head makes such a difference. Uh, Steadicam monopod, which if you step on this, it'll extend hands free, like it'll like uh, So it's really handy to keep your hands free. Uh, and then I've got a little boom pull and a big boom pull. And I'll be bringing both of those since I have to mic two people for this. Uh, this is an empty Pelican. This used to be my audio case. Uh, and I was talking to my buddy Chris, who's shooting this thing with me um, soon that I'm packing for. And he was saying, like, do I have to bring my audio kit? It's my biggest piece. That's like my biggest case. And I was like, no, absolutely not. But I used to have a huge case for it. Now that's just empty until I figure out something to do with it. This is my beloved innovative cart, which I will be living off of uh, for this whole shoot and be able to just push it from my hotel room across to the convention center. I have, this is a tripod case that I can fit a tripod and a couple light stands in if I want to, but most of the time I bring this beast. And this thing is actually a drum hardware case. Uh, it's an SKB, um, they don't put the, the model number on there like Pelican does for everything. Um, but this, I can fit three big Manfrotto light stands. I can fit uh, three tripods, both booms. So I end up just bringing this and loading it up with stuff. And then, lastly, I, I, well, I keep saying lastly, but I've got umbrellas and stuff that I can put on my Hudson Spider Mosey. Here's the 42-inch rails. I've got a bunch of duvetine, uh, which is flame-retardant black fabric. Um, that's just a cool picture of me that I have taped to the wall filming some horses with a Ronin a few years ago. Uh, photo taken by Danny Wada. Thanks, man. Also, this photo taken by Danny Wada in a similar place. Um... I recently bought but haven't yet used, um, I've had this pink paper that I've used for a long time as a backdrop upstairs, but I got a couple more rolls of paper, um, some black paper, some blue paper, uh, and some yellow paper maybe, something fun. Uh, but I got a few rolls of paper that I'm excited to use for product stuff, and then I've got foam core and stuff for other product stuff. So that's obviously all stuff that I'm not taking with me, uh, and then I own four C stands That'll be coming with me. Oh, and I got a pop-up blue screen that has green screen on the back. Um, and that is everything that I own video-wise. That, that's all of it. Uh, except for, I'm saving this for last because I'm super excited about it. Um, and I've made a couple videos about this on the channel. Let me flip this around. Mm -mm. The mic receiver is just dangling on things back here, so hopefully... That's not overly distracting or loud. But this case, I wish was more portable because it's really, really not. Um, but if this is my drone case, usually, and now I switched it to my auto case for this gig, but this is my drone case, which fits the Mavic, the controller, the charger, and all that. This guy is my FPV drone case. And I don't know why people make uh, backpacks and they swear by like, oh, this is the best backpack for FPV stuff. I don't, I don't know why or how you could fit everything in a backpack, but this guy here, we open it up, has all of my FPV stuff. So I've got my DJI goggles, my DJI controller. Uh, I have two drones. I have the Beta FPV uh, 95X version 3, um, which it's deceiving, like this thing is really small. It seems big because I'm holding it next to the camera. But this thing is really small and you can fly it um, in, like it's got prop guards all around it. So I can fly this indoors and in people's facilities and just get awesome footage, which has been really fun. Um, and I'm getting better slowly. And then I have a bigger, faster, crazier drone. This is the Johnny FPV um, iFlight something or other, which I already scraped up pretty bad in some crashes the other day. 
um, flying it for the first time of the year, but I mount my Insta360 Go 2 on here as my main camera because I don't like... GoPros are heavy and they're expensive. This one was lighter and easier. But so in this case, it's one massive case to hold to the smallest drone you could imagine. But I've got all these props because every time you fly it, you break props. Um, I have the charger. These are all batteries. The batteries on these things last about four minutes, five minutes, six minutes um, at most. So if you want to fly for 20 minutes, you need four batteries. Um, and they're all very sensitive and can light on fire if you're not careful. So I charge these in my oven with the oven off, obviously, but I, I charge them um, so that in case they do burst into flames, it's not in my basement next to a wall or something. Uh, it's in my oven, or I can do it outside too. Um, but those are all batteries, and I have a, a tool kit um, with screwdrivers and wrenches and stuff and more batteries. Uh, and then this is all sorts of different screws and stuff um, to repair all these drones, because if you don't fly FPV, um, you should know that every time you fly, you crash. Like, they're insanely hard to even just land. Uh, and so you crash land every time. They break all the time. And you have to fix them. And you don't want to come home every time to fix them. And so slowly I added to this so that there, I've got screwdrivers and all sorts of stuff so that I can repair these drones when I inevitably crash them. Um, but this kit I will not be taking on this trip because I don't think it's going to be the kind of place where I can fly an FPV drone and uh, and not hurt anyone. I'm not that good yet. Uh, and I'm hiring this my buddy Chris, who I was talking about with the big audio kit. His company is called Robo Aerial, and he's a, an insanely good drone pilot and FPV pilot. Um, and so I'm not even bringing my drone because I hired the best drone pilot in Chicago to come down and film in Indy. So there's no reason to, to bring my drone. That would just be foolish and redundant. So let me finish, pull this awkwardly over here. That's it. That's everything that I own. That's all the chargers. I guess that doesn't include my computer and hard drives and some of the, the stuff that I have for editing, but that's not the fun stuff. Um, this is, this is what I use. Everything you saw tonight, uh, I guess I didn't talk about which tripod I use, but get a tripod, get a good tripod, uh, and you'll be fine. Um, but uh, yeah, four C-stands, some light stands, some grip heads, some tripods, the only things I really didn't walk through, and I have a four-foot uh, Quasar Rainbow, which I've shown in other videos. Excuse me. But that's everything. That's everything I own for video production. That's how I film everything that I film, and it's fun. Um, well, I also got the Raw Bay turntable, but I haven't really used it yet. Um, but we're doing some, my buddy Michael and I are going to do some product videos in a couple weeks, and I'm excited. Uh, yeah, go put your daughter to bed, Chris. I'm, I'm stoked to work with you too, man. Um, so yeah, thanks for hanging out. This video ends now. I really appreciate it. If you've got any ideas, these, these Tuesday night live streams are always interesting to me. It's, I've, I talk about this every time, but it's a challenge for me to come up with ideas and uh, I, I've embraced this as an obligation to create, um, but that's not always an easy thing. And so if I, I, some, I sometimes do these things and no one shows up or somebody shows up for a second and they leave, sometimes there's a handful of people here. But if you've got an idea for something you think would be interesting, something that you could ask questions about or that I may be able to lend some experience to, um, I say experience and not expertise for a reason. But if there's anything, throw it in the comments, and I'd be happy to dive into that as, as best as I can uh, in weeks to come. But otherwise, there's going to be some videos coming out hopefully this next week. And uh, I've recorded them already, but I broke all the gear down, um, so I just have the post-production to do on them. And uh, yeah, otherwise, I'll see you next week, 8.30 Central, every week, Tuesday nights. That's all I got. Thanks. Thanks for watching. And especially if you're watching this later, not live, and you made it to this point, uh, I'm very impressed. Leave a comment, and I'll send you a sticker or something like that. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Chris, for hanging out. Have a great day, night, whatever, wherever. See you later. Bye.